one day he uh took me out to he took me out to city island and when he took <laughs> me out, and when he took me out to city island i had ceviche with him and his girl and <laughs> literally i just started get like, sick i got sick and now he was like you allergic to shrimp like nah, maybe it's my whole life then maybe a month down the line my mom she cooked ceviche for us you know like we had a family gathering and i had ceviche and yo i just i just just started throwing up again and she's like yo you allergic and i was like how am i allergic he's like you need to stop eating um shrimp you're allergic like yeah. if you told me you ate, ate it before you threw up and it's the second time you can't eat it anymore well then and it was weird developing that allergy towards it i mean that's how we get um, like i just caught um lactose intolerancy as i got older wow you know what i'm saying like i me, i used to have cookies and milk every day you know when i was young i dairy all day any easy when i hit a certain age yo it would mess me up you know i can't even drink i don't even drink regular milk no more you know and it's probably the same exact thing with the, um the ceviche you know it's like once your body hits a certain age, you know what I mean? Things do change. And and that's just the way it is. Man, it was just it was just a weird time for me. Like like I said, even for me, like I'll drink the almond, I'll drink almond milk, you know, just to kind of supplement drinking milk, you know, because I just know I'm like, man, this milk's not even good. Like they the pasteurization of the milk and all that, what they put it through. By the time you get it, it's not really that well, not doesn't really give you the the um the nutrients you need. So I just start drinking almond milk and just, you know, eating, eating like kale, you know, drinking these smoothies, these kale smoothies and all that, you know. So um so yeah, yeah man. Before before we, you know, I know we were about to get it into it, but you know, you know, what I mean, I just want to say rest in peace to Ahmad Jamal, man, like one of the most prolific jazz composers and arrangers of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away today. He transitioned mm. over, and you know that guy. He really inspired like people like me. You know, people like Lars Professor. You know, Phantom. You can you can elaborate. You already know. You already know how that go. The samples is ridiculous. That's those were the the the. You know, we loved it. We he was a musician. He was he's real dope. You know, and you can't. It, it hurts every time we lose one of the great. You know what I mean. Uh, musicians, producers, anybody in this music game, anybody in life. But, uh, you know, he's very respected and yeah, I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, definitely one of the, one of the great, I mean, and I was, the funny part about it is I was just sampling him. So just to kind of like, it's eerie sometimes like, damn, he passed away today. So I, I, I put, I put a couple of posts of some of his, some of his works that people sampled from, from Pete Rock to, to to Kanye, to Lars Professor, like you know, he's a very instrumental, you know, puzzle piece in hip hop. You know, so rest in peace to Amon Jamal, yo, for real. You know, he, he reminds me. He brings back thoughts of um, brings back thoughts of KMD, actually for me. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I don't, I can't recall which record, but it was a real standout record, and um. Yeah, but his 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 style of playing was ridiculous, you know. Yeah, rest in peace, Ahmad. Yeah, for real. Well, certainly, and you know, whenever Distro Lord is on the podcast, he's gonna teach you something about music history. Drop so the rest peace, Today on the show, we got Phantom of the Beat. How's G? How you doing, brother? Peace, bro. How you? I'm good. Can't complain. Doing well, doing well, and and uh, let the folks know where are you at right now. Um, I'm in New York, New York, you know what I mean? Just hanging out, chilling right here with you guys. Get ready to do the damn thing. I feel, I feel. Distro Lord, you got anything you want to say about Phantom before we start? Man, this guy, this guy, you know, UMC, just, you know, just, 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 just off of that, you know, alone, you know, the, the man got his, his credentials is crazy. Uh, we always stayed in contact with each other, you know, throughout the years, you know, you know, he makes so many cl classic hip hop joints and he still got more in the clip. And, um, this oh. week, this week coming up, you know, we about to do a, an epic beat battle, you know, this Saturday 
and he's one of the judges him and him and another legend ron browse and so it's gonna be nice man and i feel like you know when we do these uh producer plug events is to really bring the generations together you know like what we're doing right now i feel like you know what what i the one thing that the reason why i started producer plug in 2019 is i've seen there's a lot of division between you know my generation and your generation you know because you guys are 20 years old so you know we we have a 20 to 30 year gap you know a 40 year gap and i feel like th the program is to bring everyone together for them to all learn each other learn each other learn each other but also for them to look up to the people like all right cool he telling me to change this fix my mix different mm. snare ch ch mm. change the baseline and i feel like i'd rather hear it from a phantom i'd rather hear it from a browse it's cool to listen to my my contemporaries but if they telling me that they know they've been in the big rooms you know mm. like you know he'd been like i said man you know apollo kids you know you know just just like so many so many big records he has done you know you could yeah yeah phantom and please yeah. elaborate on some of your catalog yeah. you know oh, man. viewers you want to know something man let me tell you something and, and i just recently started really really uh embracing truthfully what i do like i used to do it for just you know it was fun for us you know what i'm saying it was it i didn't think that it was really really uh, uh inspirational type of thing for people that were really involved in listening and learning and it's like yo dude you you're the producer guy you know that that merits respect so um like i'm saying i i really really embraced it and i didn't even know it when i was a umc that i was a producer you want to know the truth i wasn't into it like that i just thought we was make it let's just make these beats so we can run to one you know what i'm saying and, and give it to the people and it, it took some time and then i realized yo wait a minute that's why we transition that's why i transition and and then i i took a good hold and a whole grip on it and said yo this is what we're going to do we're going to make these beats we're going to make these pieces for the artists because we know the sound and like you were saying um we've been in the big rooms you know we was back there back then with with the two inch tapes and you know splicing and cutting and you know the the boards that you 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 couldn't turn anything off because it had to be recalled in the morning if you know the ssl wasn't working right you take the pictures of the, the faders and all of that you come in make sure everything's aligned and, and and back up so yeah i i appreciate being one of those guys being one of those dudes that can definitely pass on the wisdom and pass on the knowledge i mean even though we're in a real real technical world right now and things seem to be you know way easier but if if you caught some of the knowledge that some of us large professor pete rocks or your molly malls or myself could give you it's like you're dealing with the best of both worlds you know that's how I know how to keep up with everything because I come from one era and this, for me, this is easy. This is cakewalk, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I love to give that back to, to, to the new heads that's coming up right now. So Phantom, what got you started in the music? Um, uh, basically it was wanting to be down, wanting to be out there like everybody else was out there rhyming at the time, you know? <laughs> um and um the, the way it happened for me was that my mom you know like we got this family where and it's like a whole bunch of other families you know you wake up on you do work in school on friday you wake up on saturday or sunday one of those days are going to be the cleanup day you know what i mean so my mom had like a basket of a woven basket with just a whole bunch of 45s in it you know and um i think i was dusting them off one day and i'm looking at the titles and um i decided to go play one of them and it's not that i never heard it before but something sparked me that day and um because my mom and my family they always played records all day long but um i put this one particular record on um uh, what was it uh papa don't papa don't take no mess james brown and yeah. uh, I listened to it 
And at that time, um, Biz Marquis was out, the Vapors. So I'm like, I'm putting, you know, one and one together, like, yo, this is where they be getting it from, like, like that. And that's what really, really intrigued me, you know. That's what started me from there. So now I was on the hunt because now I'm realizing, oh, all they did was, you know, I don't. I don't even know if we called it sample at that time. They just, you know, they took this record and rhymed over it, you know? So that's what really got me started. And then just growing up as a B-boy, just growing up as a, you know, a break dancer, graffiti, or everything that you could imagine that's, that falls under hip hop. That's what I was doing, DJing, you know? So, um, you know, I, I come from that world. And and music has always been part of my life, you know what I mean? Growing up and, and just wanting to be about it. And, you know, we're from Staten Island. So, you know, I, I just felt it was my duty, you know, to we got to get out there. We got to do something. Um, and and hence that sparked the UMCs, you know, me and my partner, Cool Ken. And that was actually going on to the right question. That I was going to say, what was the hip hop scene like in Staten Island? Like. I know it's different in different boroughs, but at the time when you were coming up, what was it like in your borough? What was the scene like? Originally, there was no scene that I saw visibly. I couldn't see it, you know. I didn't know there was a whole lot of people doing it, but they were. So when when we was coming out, we um, you know, everybody was tended to their own business. So there was a whole bunch of different little pockets of MCs doing their own thing, you know, from the Hill, Stapleton, um, West Brighton, all the different projects. I mean, come on, we all watch video music box. We always, you know, running around wanting to be something, wanting to do what we saw on TV. So um, it just so happened, the, the thing that really stood out at the time that was obvious was, you know, Dr. Rock. And, and the Force MCs, you know, who we know as the Force MDs, um, they were making a name for Staten Island at the time. And it was it was beautiful. It was like, wow, all right, at least somebody's doing something. You know, they was running all over the place from uptown to Bronx. They was doing shows. And um, we was just perfecting our crafts. We was just honing in on trying to figure out you know, what's the right move to make? How are we going to do it? You know, um, and it took us a second because we had different, we, we had a group, we had like two or three different groups before it just dwindled down to just me and Kim myself. Um, we had a group called uh, MI6, you know, Mission Impossible 6, and we was all together. But, you know, the cream rises to the top. And it just, you know, it started disbanding slowly but surely until it was two left. And we figured, yo, we, you know, we still got to do it. You know, we compliment each other. We're going to make it happen still. And I guess that's what the chemistry was that unlocked the locks. You know what I'm saying? Um, and lo and behold, while we were doing what we were doing, you still had other groups you know, uh, preparing and, and, and sharpening their swords and hence wu uh Pop the Brown Hornet, Shaheen, um, King Just, you know, we had a good run on Staten Island. So it's it was, it was remarkable. I had a great time for that uh, period. So was you, was you using, uh, when you started making production, were you doing pause tapes or, or, or you went straight to the machine? Now, nah, when the only time we use pause tapes, the only time I used pause tapes was was for school. Like, you know, the day after we done heard Stretch and Bobito or we heard whatever, whatever show and we caught records that, you know, uh, you wasn't supposed to be up that late for. We would, you know, do it like that and then come to school and have our tape set up. So. When when I started producing, producing, um, the first machine I was on was the um, EPS sixteen plus. You know that, that that's the dinosaur, and and you know everybody knows it in the family of it, it's the original ASR. You know what I mean? So yeah, the EPS was uh, the sixteen plus, and I learned that from um, 
from messing with my man RNS, who's uh, you know what I mean? He's one of the Staten Island producers. Um, you know, he's the one who produced for Shaheem and King Just and whatnot. And um, yeah, that's how I started. And and then you know, then you elevate through the years now because I never I was never an SP12 guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And um not to say that uh, I didn't like it. It's just when you think about it, and you know Staten Island's history, the EPS, the Insonic, the ASR was our go-to machine for all the producers that came from Staten Island. That was our machine. You know, we, you know, we we was up in the crib, and I guess it was just a matter of the way we flopped. Everybody decided to run with that machine. It was good. It was dope. So now, not yeah, that's how I started it off. Yeah, I heard RZA um, <clears throat> use the ASR to record the group as well. While he'll make the beats and then put, attach the mic to it and then just record the vocals onto the ASR. So it was definitely the go-to machine um, that a lot of producers used as well. You know, yeah. I know Map, I know Map used it. Mm -hmm. you know, RZA used it. Ross mm -hmm. Presser used it. But from Staten Island, definitely RZA you know told me stories about how he used he used it to record some of the clan members on, on the asr and the, and the, the asr is the most heaviest you know music production yeah, yeah. thing of all time and you gotta yeah. have some muscle to carry that thing around it, you it know was bulky. it was well the yeah it was bulky we had the carrying cases and all that the the newer ones the asr 10s and whatnot it got lighter but when it was known as the the ensonic eps 16 yeah that was a dinosaur b that was that was heavy you couldn't even it was hard to carry that around it was too too big too heavy uh you know how they say it was um it's awkward you know but that would give us the sound that we wanted and rizza too he I mean, we all been up in the room together. All me, RNS, RZA, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of, you know, stories and, and times that coming up around all of that, it was just like, wow, this is, when you look back on it, it's, it was an incredible, incredible time, B. You know how it is um, when you, you've been a part of history like you've actually seen it, you witnessed it, you was a part of it. Um, all of that, all of that took effect, you know, with me. I, I was in love with it, B, at that time. I was in love with, with the fact that we all up in, you know, my homeboy's crib in the projects and and in and out traffic, in and out traffic, you know. And it's this dude, it's that dude, it's this dude, it's that guy who later becomes you know, RZA, who later becomes uh, Inspector Deck, who later becomes Ghostface, who later becomes Pop the Brown Hornet, who later becomes Shaheen, who later becomes, you understand what I'm saying? Who later becomes UMCs. That's that's how it was going down over there on the island. So, yeah, I was, I was glad, very glad to be part of that history right there. That's great. Corey, so, like, head, how would you... Oh, Corey, you got it. No, you got it. So, uh... You, I, I want to go back. You mentioned uh, how you weren't so sure of the inspiration you were as a producer. I want to know, like, what were the signs that were, like, hitting you? Like, oh, yeah, I guess, like, you know, this is something that I actually do uh, provide for uh, other people. That's, that's a great question. Um, what really, really happened, and, and um, I'm not trying to be, you know, I want to just say that. It took a couple of my friends to really, really, you know, hit me in the head with it. Like I said, I, I was doing it for fun, but when we started making, when I started making records that were really, really hitting in the clubs and on the street, and 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 even you know, friends of mine telling me, "Yo, dog, you was on Soul Train. Do you do you understand the magnitude of of?" of all of that together you know what i'm saying because we live with ourselves we totally live with ourselves so sometimes we i mean don't get it wrong some people recognize it to the fullest and they run with it and they're as cocky as a motherfucker you know what i'm saying but you know i'm i'm a cool 
I'm just a little humble. That's it. Yeah, I'm chill. And um, and um, that's what just started making me realize a little bit more. You know, you got some good people around you that are, are informing you, like, yo, look what you're doing. You look at the public. You look at you look at the masses who who are involved in the music, and and you see your name written in articles, and and you hear people talking about you putting putting you involved in in the whole list of different you know producers and and, and artists and um one day it just hits you it goes off like a light bulb oh yeah this is what i do i forgot you know what i'm saying <laughs> let me let me let me get back to it now <laughs> so let me get back to it for a young kid how would you describe the run from umc and like what does umc stand for and yeah oh man that Everybody, we used to get confused with that too. Everybody thought it was because Ultramagnetic MCs came out around the same time, probably a little before us. But um, UMCs was, um, it is, is undisputed masters of charisma. So, you know, that's that's how we were. We used to dance. You know what I mean? We we love women. We love girls. We was chasing. You know, we was being fly at the time, you know what I'm saying? So so why not Undisputed Masters of Charisma? Or we also called it um, um, Universal MCs, you know, because we both got knowledge of self. So we was on that wave, you know, too. And, um, and then, you know, we just took it a little further and said the usage may change. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had different... You know, at different times, we was just, you know, messing with the people's heads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Good looking. So it was, it was, it was that. And um, our way of life, though, was 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 a lot, of, a lot of fun, you know. And that's why the album was called Fruits of Nature, because, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, but moved out to Staten Island. Like a lot of people from Staten Island done. You know, a lot of them are from, you know, other boroughs. So Staten Island became like a melting pot. That's where your mothers and, and, and your fathers who were trying to do good for themselves and better for their family said, look, you know, we're going to pick up. We're going to leave Brooklyn. You know, the streets is a little crazy. And we're going to move over here where it's a little more, you know, rural, a little more. Yo, we woke up and and we were we were hunting for snakes. You know what I mean? We were we were in the woods. You know, we were fishing off the pier. We were bike riding, and you see what I'm saying? So, opposed to some of the the the, the inner city roughness, toughness that we came from, Staten Island was a little more a little more calm. Don't get it twisted. There was still, like I said, there was a lot of people that moved from Val, from Brooklyn, from Manhattan, from Queens, the Bronx, to Staten Island. So you still had, you know, some of your okie dokes out there. Um, but it was just a cool, a little tranquil, more than so, more than, you know, where we came from. And um, we had a good time out there, you know. I did things out there that I, I, I wouldn't have caught up to while I was living in Brooklyn that I didn't know, you know, like I said, we would go snake hunting, like really, you know, they were garter snakes, but you know, we was trying to catch them, you know? Um, and we had dirt bikes and we had hills, we had the bowl, you know, we was ramps and all of that, you know, we was wilding out, there. It, you know, it was, it was a place for kids to really, really get into the, get into the land and, and do outdoor things and, and, and kick it and chill and you make friends growing up and you know oh no that's my friend for for freeze tag or for you know dodgeball or whatever you know what i'm saying um stick ball whatever we would do out there that's that's how it developed for us out there. yeah the kids now need more of that let me tell you man dude i don't remember the last time i saw a kid in a park you know what i mean i mean yeah they still play basketball but i'm talking about the way we used to play in the park it, yo, it's hard, man. Everybody's stuck in the house on that. Doing mm -hmm. this. <laughs> was, um, can you recall the first time you ever heard your song on the radio? And you know what radio station, you know, played it? Oh, man. 
It was the first time I heard it. Because what happened was when we came out with the record, um, the record was out, but we were already gearing up to go on tour. So me personally, I don't remember ever catching it in New York uh, before I came back off the tour. And you know, that was that infamous tour with EMI. So it was UMCs, uh, Akinelli, Nas, uh, Large, Profe uh, 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 Large Professors Group. Main uh, source. Source. Um, who else was on that tour? Jay, I said. Um, it was just all of us on that tour. And uh, we were gone for a while. We, we did the whole, uh, we did the whole East Coast down from here down to Florida. Then we went Midwest. Then we went to LA. And uh, I think I heard my song in LA first on the radio. That's what happened. I heard it out there first. And yeah, I was ecstatic. I was like, I, I forgot the station. Was it? We were in um, like the, no, we were in the Oakland side. Uh, yeah, the Bay. the Bay Area. Yeah, that's where I heard it at first, and I was, and I think it was swaying on um, tech. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we heard it there. I never heard it on the radio before. So by the time we had left and went on that tour, when we left, we were nothing was popping. Nothing was popping. By the time we came back to New York, P, we was all over the place. I was yeah, I was like, yo, <laughs> it's like we we broke out, disappeared, came back, and we were different people. You know what I'm saying? But that's what all that touring helped do too. So we was doing all college tours, we was doing all the shows. And um for a lot of young people coming up into the game, the college tours and uh college radio and all of that. Is what helped catapult us. You know what I mean? A lot of it starts with the with the college crowd, with the college groups, uh, the college DJs, uh, you know, until it it reaches a peak and then it overspills. You know what I'm saying? And now radio catches on to it because now you got uh you got radio promoters that's pushing it to the next level and all that. So um, yeah, that's how that's how that happened. It started in Oakland, that's where I first heard my record. I was excited. We was thrilled. You know, we probably damn near tried to rock the bus the bus over. You know, like it was it was dope. It was a very very dope experience. Um, and one better, we got calls from we got calls from New York telling us that they just played our record on the radio. You know what I mean? So that was that was one of those moments too that really really had me excited. You know, family would call, friends would call. It would be like, oh man, how, how's, how does it sound? Do we sound good? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a good feeling, man. Does it sound good? And yeah, sure enough, it was great. It was great. So, Fandom, what did UMC do better than MI6 to be so successful? Oh man, listen, we, 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 how do you say, we trimmed the fat? You know, it was it, you, you get, you got to understand. If everybody is it like-minded on your team and your group, you know, they don't have to be exactly the same. But you know, when friction arises, be you it's it's not gonna work. If you can't come to agreements, if you can't, you know, figure out what the next move is logically together without somebody really, really being hurt or offended. Or every time it's a, a problem with something, yeah, you you, you got to part ways. It's just like a regular relationship. You got to part ways. And um, it seemed that me and Cool Kim were were the two that were really, really like-minded. And I guess we wanted the same exact thing, you know, um, while everybody else couldn't get it together. So we, we left with no hard feelings. And we went, we stepped to the side and we just started doing what we wanted to do. Another thing, we were dancers, me and Kim. So, you know, this is part of the game that 
this part of the game, we were the ones that were always going to the city, going to grab it, going to find it from Staten Island. You understand what I'm saying? We never sat still waiting for it to come. We That's how we started. We got into the videos. We ran to the clubs. We started hanging out with everybody. And um, that's who we were. We were dancers. We were choreographers for Latifah's dances. You know, we were in um, um, Gangstar's videos from the beginning. You know, we was running with Onyx and them um, in Sound Factory and Red Zones and you know all the clubs. You know what I'm saying? While the other parts of MI6 weren't doing all of that, like that wasn't their thing. We'll, they'll go to the studio, they'll do some stuff, but there was no leg work. You know, so that's how that that came about. You know, me and Kim were like that. We, you know. I mean, I don't know if you know my partner that well, but if you pay attention, Kim is a show off. You know what I'm saying? He he needed that light, and I wanted it the same way he did. So that's what made a good fit. And um, sure enough, that's how we got our deal. We was moving. We stayed off the island. We stayed in Manhattan all day long. We stayed where it was going on at, and we came back. And um, that... That's basically the story for a lot of Staten Island rappers that really came out in blue. Like we didn't stay on the rock, you know, We because it's not there. We're trying to make it so it could be there. You know, we're trying to go out there and get it and bring it back home. So that's what that was. Um, and that's, that's, that's what made us different from the rest of the crew members of MI6. And that's how we became UMCs. Is this some yeah, common trend? Oh, that common trend that we had um, all three of y'all lit up at the stage. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I was just saying the common trend that we have on the podcast so far. I got you, Corey. Uh, is iron sharpens iron. So it sounds like you and Kim really like help each other just grind through it and and, and find those doors and get those exactly. doors, bust through those doors, and go for opportunity. So exactly, that's exactly what it was. You you hit it right on the on the head. Mm -hmm. And just to add on that, I was just wondering if uh, this is something you knew from the jump. Like, is this something that you uh, recognized before uh, people started uh, finding their own ways in different uh, groups? Or is this something that uh, you knew after? Um, now, what, what ends up happening is, you know, you got this inner, you know, voice that tells you this is what you want, you know. And, and you, I mean, for me, I knew it. And like I said, I always knew it. I didn't know what it was going to be. I always knew it was a, it was a, I, I wanted to aspire to be something dope. You know what I'm saying? Something ill. Um, and um, it, it started with me, sort of with hip hop, but um, I'm an electrician too. You know, I was doing that since I was a kid. You understand what I'm saying? Now, to a lot of people, that's like one of the most prestigious, you know, jobs to really, really have. Like, you, you mess with electrical. So I was on that already. I just wanted to make sure that whatever I did was monumental. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, and then, you know, it, it all coincides. I love to produce. You know, I love the studio. I love the boards. You know what I mean? I, Technical, technically, that that's where my mind is, you know, and and aspiration wise, I always reach for for more, and it's not over yet because it's still more to acquire. There's still more to get. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, I hope I answered that question. You know, I felt one hundred percent. Did you um, did you ever battle uh, on some like <clears throat> dancing wise? Did you ever battle Ghost or Capadonna? Because I heard they were nice. They were nice break dancers too. So they was nice. Yeah, they were nice. They were all right. We was all under the building. <laughs> we was all under the under 218, under 212. Right. That's where we set up the cardboard and everything. And um, like our buildings is is like you know, you could go in through the front, out through the back, but there's like a, a big for you, you know what I mean? That you could just stand under the building. Yeah, we would set up the cardboard. Um, I never really battled them, you know, we was around, but 
at the time that they were out there, you know, battling, we was already moving around in the city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I get back and see everybody doing everything. But, and then too, we were a little, how could I say? Um, remember, I was from Brooklyn at the time. So when you're moving into a new place, it's, it's, you don't make friends that quick. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody was doing everything, but, you know, I wasn't into their fold just that quick. You know, it took a couple of, you know, dips and dodges and a couple of hangouts and a couple of, you know what I mean, a couple of little knuckle checks and, oh, yeah, yeah, he cool, he cool, he cool. So then that's when we started all getting cool, and and then that's when I became really, really a Staten Islander now. You know, growing up out there, going to school, my mom used to work in the school out there. Um, everybody knew my mom. And uh, but yeah, the break dancing was 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 live out there. I think um the the most experience with break dancers or the closest thing I had with Cap Deck, um, um, um Ghost, I probably had the radio at the time. The box, the boom. Yeah, box. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was just like that. So yeah, but we we we've all been around. It was dope though. It was a dope time. Now it's funny because Ghost Ghost told me he's like, I was nice with the backspins. I was, I can't imagine because he's so tall <laughs> and cap. They were he, he, so he was backspins and um <laughs> and um and handspin. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, eh. hand spins that ghost was good with the, the hand spins and the back spins um me my thing was windmill all day mm. all day windmilling you know what i mean um i remember one time though i broke my wrist too because i tried to do the you know how you try to do the scissor kick yeah, 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 yeah. And, try to flip and, over. Oh, oh man i i landed on my wrist the wrong way back then <laughs> And uh, but yeah, dudes was nice with the dancing though. Very nice with the break dancer. And uh, I think that's, you know, like I said, that was all part of the culture. Like that's how we all got involved into the music side of it as well. It all was hand in hand. B, you couldn't you couldn't play these records without break dancing. You you couldn't break dance without having a DJ playing the records. Or, or you know, you couldn't break dance while the DJ's playing the records and somebody's not writing graffiti somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like it was all interchangeable, all interjectable. It was all there at the same time. And, and that was our culture. That is the culture of hip hop. That's how it really, really started. You know what I mean? That's what was bringing us together. That's where the camaraderie started coming from, all those different elements. So I got a double for you then. Uh, on the culture of hip hop, because uh, I'm curious, how does uh, all you talk about the break dancing and the graffiti? How does this all coincide with its culture, and how is it linked? And then, how, is this missing from uh, current culture now? Is there anything that you wish was a part of it? And what is uh, grown more out of it in uh, in recent history? I mean, mm -mm. like like any any culture subculture. You know, evolution's gonna happen. Um, and the story is gonna get told different as the years, you know, go by. Um, I would wish that I would see a lot more of of the 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 break dancing, the graffiti, the 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 camaraderie in hip hop, because right now a lot of hip hop is leading to a lot of death if you ask me um and i think it was all those pieces that cemented us a lot more you know those things helped they helped with the camaraderie you know uh it wasn't beef it was battling you know all right who's going to be the best crew who's going to really really dance this out and, and get the win you know what i mean um but like I said, you know, everything evolves and it turns into what it ends up turning into. It never stays the same. So, you know, we lost a lot of that. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't really money driven um, 
back then hip hop. You know, we was doing, we didn't even know it was going to be as big as it is. You know what I'm saying? We just thought we were going to be on TV or on stage rapping and we were going to be revered for it. You know, it turned into, yo, this is a real lucrative business. It could, it's money. And you know what happens when money starts getting involved. Ruthlessness mm -hmm. starts coming out of people. You know, it's big business now. Oh, uh, you know, I'm going to do everything to protect the bag. Yo, you know what I mean? It just started going crazy. I mean, even back then, dudes was rocking jewels. You know what I'm saying? But that had more to do with persona, like style. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was it was a little different. It was a lot different. But um now this 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 game turned into a whole different game, and, and that's the evolution about it. And I, I take some credit. I'm not saying that I'm the man who was able to 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 uh pass on to the youth, you know, every piece of bit of knowledge that they needed to know. I think that we failed in that part at one point you know like a lot a lot of us more of us should have really really did our best to grab the reins and, and hold on to it um but then again you can't fault a lot of us neither because we were first generations getting into it so we didn't even know better you know we just thought we were um we knew that we were just trying to accomplish something and, you know, we got lost in the business ourselves. You know, you get ask a lot of the groups from that era. We all got jerked. Somebody got jerked somewhere. Everybody took a took a loss, you know, and, and we didn't realize the the business of it. We were so wrapped up in the, the art and the creating that, you know, money was just slipping out the back door on us, you know. So, I mean, as we got older, we started. <clears throat> getting more involved in the business started started learning more started paying attention more and um those are jewels that needed to be passed down and and you know to to some aspect to some aspect we 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 miss doing that so now you have a whole culture that's considered hip hop but they're doing a whole lot you know different than what it started out as uh and you know like i said it's it's an evolution everything and it's not loss i don't think but it could use some help you know what i mean the game could use a lot of help i still love a lot of the stuff that's out there that's coming out and then there's a whole bunch that i don't get with you know i don't choose to mess with but um proper guidance is necessary that's the, basically what i could say and my question to both you guys, it goes right along with Corey's question, is you guys grew up in that like golden era of hip hop, especially in New York. What do you guys miss the most about that? And what do you wish that you could bring to modern day hip hop? Got that, Jay? Man, um what I what I well, first and foremost, what I miss is um, like he said, the graffiti. Like I grew up taking the seven train, the Red Baron, and everything is graffiti. I mean, I'm talking about the seats, the windows, the floors, the straps on the straps on the on the hangers to hold on, and then taking the seven train and you know seeing five points and seeing a whole building almost a mile long filled with graffiti, going it going into the city, and and just hearing hearing music like hearing this new sound. I remember the first time I ever heard um, the message. Uh, Melly Mel, the message. It was uh, I was at Whitestone Bowling Alley. It was my friend Amber's birthday party, and um, out of nowhere, the song came on. I just started dancing. I don't know what it was, but I just started dancing. Just start dancing. And uh, her father, Tommy Washington, he was like, "Oh, look at you! You got yourself a little hip hopper over here." And and it was just like, it was that to me. It was just a a, a great song. And then uh, my dad was just looking at me, and then um. You know, back in the days, you know, Channel 11, they will have a Soul Train like around like 12, 1 o'clock. So around that time, Soul Train came on and uh, 
that so they came they were performing it so i'm sitting down like oh shoot this is this is this is live right here this is this is the new thing like and and, and i was my father he always he he based a lot of a lot of my musical taste comes from my father you know like he put me on to soul music he loved elvis he loved the righteous brothers he loves pink floyd you know um steely dan was one of his favorite groups you know but then it's like he had this soul part of him that you know marvin came on or um one, one of my favorite stories is uh my sister my sister went to brooklyn tech and uh you know, this is when um, um, Fuji's came out, Killing Me Softly. And uh, we, we, we popped in the tape in his van and we waiting for my sister to come out of a parent teacher conference. And we're listening to the album. And uh, he he hears Killing Me Softly. And he's like, man, this is this is not even real music. And I'm like, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, are you serious? Like, well, how, how can you hate on Lauren Hill, like this is a beautiful song. She wrote this song, and he's just looking at me like she, he, she, she's, she's covering the song. It's not even her song, right? But the way they flipped it was dope. So my sister came, came down. She did good in school. Now we're driving back, and we listen to CBS one hundred and one. That's like the oldie station. And uh, cousin Brucey come on. And it's so funny. I, I always, I'll never forget the story. <laughs> cousin Brucey comes on. He says, "Well, ladies and gentlemen." Um, a resurgence of this record has came back. Let's play the original, Roberta Flack, Killing Me Softly. So my dad is driving, and then when he see, hears Cousin Brucey, he just like turns around and Roberta starts singing. And that was the first time I learned about um, knowing your samples. That was like for me, but it's like the intensity of New York at that time was was dope because it's like like he's saying brothers were break dancing i went to 14th street i went to canal street we're buying cds we're getting tapes you know we're, we're, we're we had to go get an sms tape or we had to get a a, a, a ron g tape or you know like a, a kick a pre tape a clue tape like these are things that we had and we all we all like you know like he said too like in earlier the conversation like we had to like record the radio you know so we get to school like oh did you you heard what flex played you know and and, and it was nice you heard what marley played it was just it was like a competition within our, each other but we, yeah, we, yeah. we really loved that though you know yeah 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 that was it that was definitely it um yeah be like <laughs> he just covered it <laughs> that's that's just how it was back then um, and actually, I forgot what the I I lost the question. <laughs> oh, you're all good. I mean, I can get you with another one if you need that. <laughs> no, it's all good. I was just you know, I was just saying, what do you wish would come to like modern day like hip hop? Oh, he nah, he knocked me back into like I'm like wow, yeah. And then actually stopping over at Washington Square Park, and then that's where you saw everybody at at the same. You know what I'm saying? All your peers, all your alumni, and. And that's where everybody was striving to be the rapper or be the dancer or be the actor or be the, we came up with a whole lot of different people. Be it. it started, it's just, it was a melting pot of us, you know, just all over the place. And then over the years, you see where everybody went and what everybody did, you know, this one is, Oh, you know who that is? You don't remember Rahelio from back in the day he used to be at the park. Show. And you're like, wow. Oh, now he's the actor known as, you know what I'm saying? That's what I miss about it all. Uh, just the come up, you know, the come up was 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 sick. It was crazy. You could tell we was all about it. We was living it, you know, just to get to where we wanted to go. And um, a lot of us made it. Um, some, of, some of us didn't. Um, but you know what? Everybody, all of us who were involved or who are involved, we got those great stories to tell. You know, I don't know how many good stories are being told right now. You know, I'm hearing a whole lot of things that are happening out there in in in, in the, the the game that's not is disheartening. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we have fun coming up in this game, so. You know, and um, and we learned how to, you know, make money. It took a long time, but it was down the road. But, you know, that part. And I think also, man, you had to have like skills, man. You had to have really the skills to do all this stuff. Like you got to understand what he's saying is like kind of like 
you you know it's the five elements man you know you gotta know how to dj you gotta know how to make beats you know you gotta know how to break dance right you gotta know how to rap and you're gonna have knowledge yourself you mm -hmm. know <laughs> you gotta know how to rap for real <laughs> you know because they didn't play that back then if you was whack they they would just boo you off like get out of here we don't want we don't want to hear that you know we don't want to hear this basic joint you know what i mean get out of here beat it like you, you know take, take the mic off and if yo back in the days you know even even like even if your rhymes is whack man they throw they throw the bottles and, and the cups <laughs> at you and all that if you wasn't doing it you get them off the stage yo and it, it would be crazy it'd be a circus oh my god and you definitely couldn't sound like nobody else you could not sound like no one else you could imitate you couldn't use a lyric of his you couldn't uh corny you know what i mean corny but like i said this is our evolution <laughs> and this is what happened so you know hopefully there's better days ahead in this rap game you know what i mean i first of all i can't even distinguish what rap is anymore because everything is so blended and mixed now mm -hmm. you know um it, i don't know if they have a distinguished uh you know core of rap so i guess that's why a lot of us still tend to you know find ultimate uh ult alternate ways of finding rap music you know you know the one good thing about it now is that there's there's bigger platforms and opportunities for a lot of rappers that you probably wouldn't discover because they can't get on the radio so they're you know we have other uh ways of uh finding them you know all the streaming or the different platforms so i think that's a good thing and um because radio is another thing that i haven't even i don't really listen to at all truthfully to be honest um i catch wind of whatever the main songs are that's going on and you know i give it a yay or nay but you know i still resort back to you know my my vinyls the margin mall you know what i mean my james browns my you know my old quincy's you know things like that uh you know and I, I play it that way and i keep my mind sharp and you know i listen i think the sound was the quality of sound was a lot better back then you know and i i loved the sampling i i love the techniques now a day too but you know once you amass that something you know you never you never it never leaves you you know so i continuously you know grind with it i still do it a lot and like i said that's my choice of music more or less you know it, it keeps me calm keeps me so soothed um and whatever's going on today you know i'm nitpick i'll i'll choose what i like and you know i might get into it a little something but um yeah man it, it, it's uh it's just it, hip-hop is supposed to be fun b that's that's all I can say. It's supposed to be like one of the dopest experiences that we can have. I don't think we should be looking over our shoulders and um, without getting too deep. You understand what I'm, what's going on. You understand. You see it yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, the youth is is there's a lot of poison records in this game right now that it just don't make sense. And, and that's the part that I would love to see change about this entire game. You know yeah yeah so uh real quick i got a question for you and then we're about to wrap it up here i'm wondering uh because i don't think we touched too much on around 95 to 05 era i want to hear about that and then uh once we get that done i also want you to take your time to give me shout outs and also give some advice to uh young producers and uh hip-hop artists who want to uh find their name wow uh i think the 95 to 05 era well i don't think i know umc's was a short-lived group with with some hits you know what i mean and mm -hmm. some we had some bullseyes you know what i'm saying um so from 90 to 95 is is that was our window and um at that time we had our records out we was traveling was touring and everything and by 95 we um you know we found out that we was really really getting jerked by our label and 
you know, it turned into, you know, an ugly situation and boom, we left it. That was it for us, you know what I'm saying, as a group. So for me, 95 going into 05, 205, that's when I went and and really been, I, I was an electrician. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going to eat, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I I had that already. Um, so I, you know, I went to work for the city, um, local three, um, and I was working. But at the same time, I was working. You know, like I said, our careers, UMCs, wasn't really happening anymore. But I was still sharpening my sword i was still producing so that's what i was doing um producing making beats stacking them stacking them stacking them go to work come home still messing with beats um that's when my children were born you know what i'm saying um and i i got to a point where i didn't want to work anymore and and that was like what 90 i probably worked for like five years four years but like i said i was still making beats so um my first record i, I really got tired of the job for real and and subconsciously sometimes things happen to lead you you know because you can't lead yourself so i actually got hurt right around the time i was saying i'm sick of this job i'm sick of this job i'm tired i'm tired you know, we I had to be at work on set at seven in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I get up at you know five o'clock, five thirty to get to her. You know, and I'm like, ah, I can't take this anymore. I'm tired of it. So I ended up um, I got hurt in my eye one day on the job, which led me to have to uh get compensation, take off, take leave, and um, in that time, I was I was shopping mixtapes uh beat tapes and um the first thing i did was i ran into uh blitz was uh he was buster's manager at the time and um they brought me up to violator i played some beats that i had and no no sooner than probably like four or five days later they called me back let's go in the studio buster wants this beat right here and that was the first so you know things happen the way they happen and um uh, and since then i started producing so i hit busters uh the extension level event album and that was a bullseye you know and then i look back at my my whole record everything my track has been great bullseyes you know what i'm saying bus from first record i sold was buster rhymes you know and between there there's a couple of little smaller records that was going on the second record i hit was uh apollo kids between there there was a whole bunch of different records going on because that's when i was definitely a uh, producer for cap uh that's when i got in just producing with woo you know what i mean they was looking for different producers and all that and of course i'm from the island um so i started doing a lot of work with them um and then by the time i did magic stick for 50 and little kim that was a huge monumental record you know um that took me up different levels as well you know that was in movies uh is licensed deals uh great publishing you know what i mean and and then since then it was just just production here production there production there so now it's time for that next bullseye which you know I see it coming any day now, um, but yeah, I I just continue you know going with the flow of it all, and um, and we here now, no, you know we still here and we got a lot to, we still got a lot to pass off to people, a lot to learn, a lot to teach, you know, and, and I'm honored to be part of this game, to be part of this life, and um, to have said that I've done it and I'm still doing it. Hey, great, great. So what what do you have to say for our young hip hop artists and producers? Uh, integrity is one. Uh, and, and being, you know, true to thyself, you know, um, coming up, 
when we came up in the game, we were always true. We were always true to ourselves. We didn't waver on our styles. We didn't waver on our technique. We didn't waver on what we believed. And and when you do that, you know that's a that's a great thing. When you're just a follower, you know what I mean. That means you're being led. You know you you got to be a leader in this, and you got to be sharp, and you got to be on point. And those are just regular life values. Not even nothing to even do with just music. This is just how you're supposed to move in life. You understand what I'm saying? So now you apply that to your passion and your dream. And, you know, either you want to be a producer, you want to be an artist, whatever it is, you apply all of that to it. And, um, you know, and, and integrity, integrity, you know, loyalty, you know, it'll get you a long way. And, you know, the dream doesn't happen overnight. That's one. The dream does not happen overnight. Everybody got months, years of stories to tell before they made it to where they wanted to go. So, you know, if, if you don't have that, you know, you won't last in the game. You got to believe in yourself and faith and continue to march. Baby. You got to continue to march. That's all. Your day comes and everything breaks. You know what I mean? It opens up. But... You know, you'll never know if you don't apply yourself. You know, like, you said, Phantom, like you said, Phantom, that that's uh, just advice that that goes all all around. It's universal. It's not just for if you want to be a producer, you want to be artist for anything like that. The last thing I got to say for both of you guys is you guys got a beat battle coming up. You guys got anything? You, you guys want to preview it? You guys want to talk a little bit about it? And then this show this week. Uh, is the re self release of your meditation album, so I want to like shout that out as well. That this will nice. be out this week. Nice, nice. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the to the. You know what I missed? I just missed the interaction, the to, to be outside and to be at a physical battle, b. Like yo, know, the, the 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 zooming in and the the YouTube battles or the the instagram battles and all that all fine and cool but it's nothing like being there and be there. pulling the drums knock and just watching the people's response and the attitude hey it is it's the most refreshing feeling be when the beats come on you know so that's what i'm looking forward to the interaction with with the people man like like i said i started this in 2019 and it was all physical uh like i said we had a first one we had large professor ron browse uh ben Grimm from the now laters j love and then from there we had a we had a holiday party we had 45 king and easy lp and then from there we had a uh, rock wilder havoc and and uh, and 45 king you know as the judges and they, i have this one video where they played shook ones and like like you said the energy of new york everyone just in synchronicity all rapping peace verse and havoc is like cheesing because it's just like wow after all these years these young kids know the music right and then uh february of 2020 uh that was our last physical beat battle and um and we had ghostface and it was it was nice to have ghosts there and you know people were like like really excited we had ghosts and break beat loot that time and then so from there on you know i had i had one last year with vano someone that uh that the ex put me together was we had vano and large professor and physical beat battle which is cool so i just felt now like you're saying like phantom like just because you know we the virtual thing i like i said i can't I cannot knock it i think the virtual beat battles took producer plug to a whole other level we was only we're like we were the only platform to have no latency to have no like pressing the mute button for everybody like it was just it was just That's done cool. yeah it's such a great great way so I, you know we was featured on um auto tune a lot of like magazines saying like we're like premier virtual beat battle but there's nothing like there's nothing like you next to someone the energy right and yeah. and if you and if you carry yourself a certain type of way if you if you know you got them joints you just press play man let the music play, um speak for itself and and just to see people and i feel like that's 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 a big thing like you know 
as as a DJ, you know, the crowd reaction is always good. It's like, oh, I know they like this. So if I play this, I know they're gonna get that ooh and the ah. And and that's the main thing. Like we're 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 energies of energies of light, you know? So it's like we know, oh man, he's gonna win. And and and, and I'm excited for this Saturday. And I'm also excited um, on releasing this meditation album. Uh, I made it like almost been like two years in the making. And I feel like it's, it's a good time now, especially um, to cool, to, you know, to let kids know like, all right, cool. Yeah, I have produced a lot of records. I have executive produced a lot of records. But I feel like now as as I get older, you know, when I was younger, I was already meditating. So. Uh, I took. I, I, it really happened one day. I was in a studio in LA with 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 my collaborator uh, Kato, and uh, I had some video of my son and my Wiz in in Mexico, and they were here in the water, and uh, my son was laughing, and he's like, "Oh, that's that's an ill sample." So I'm like, "All right, let's sample it," you know, and uh, it started to build on from there. We started like yo let's put it on a certain frequency that's good for it's good for the vibration and all that so we're doing a web we're doing a web three drop um which 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 is cool and they'd be able to get on the web three drop they'd be able it's a, it's a utility so you know we're gonna have um meditation classes in new york miami los angeles uh they'd be able to get the stems to it they'd be able to chop it up with us um, and and then you know we're gonna be doing like a, a like a meditation live thing for the people that buy it on Hit Piece. You can so you can go to big shout out to people over there at Hit Piece. And then I'm gonna put it all over social media and and all the DSPs and all that. But I feel like it's I feel like you know what Phantom's saying, man. Like you know we we need to like teach these kids how to you know discipline certain things in them, right? And I feel like meditation is one of the best things to do you know learn how to breathe you know learn how to keep calm you know and versus sometimes you know you know like you know like mob deep says you know sometimes we gotta drink away the pain i just feel like let's let's put on the meditation let's breathe and and let's calm ourselves down man because we don't need to put these extra toxins in our bodies you know it allows you to vibrate on a on a different level you know what i mean like you know, there's there's a lot of sciences to the way we're supposed to be living, you know, and and that particular uh, thought of of meditation and the sounds was was wildest because I was just, you know, you go on you go on Instagram or whatever, and you come you come to certain ads or whatever, whatever they, you know, I I pop in every once in a while. Well, listen to the sound. This is the brown noise and see what it does for you you know what i mean it allows you to sleep better it allows you to you know uh yeah. control your your thoughts more and so that that's a perfect idea that meditation album um but yeah it allows you to vibrate on a different a different you know level a different plane and um we got to know who we are by nature you know we're not we're not beasts we're not savages like people you know want to continue feeling about us where we come from kings we come from higher you know higher structure you know where you know we're the human race but you don't think we were savages all our lives we weren't savages all our lives there's been a point where we were you know majestic you know even even to a higher regard but um we lost a lot of that so how do you get back to it you know there's ways to get back to it. And that meditation situation is one of the, the, the most highly recommended, you know, because it allows you to hear your inner self. It allows you to think. It allows you to clear your mind. You know, there's a lot of clutter going on in here between our two ears sometimes. And um, in order to manifest what you want, you, you got to take, you know, you got to take the right measures. You got to calm yourself. You got to hear yourself. You got to go for what you want. And um, yeah, that I just wanted to add that on. Hey, hundred percent, man! I'm so excited for this meditation album and this beat battle. Thank you, Phantom. Thank you, producer plug. Bless. You guys are always welcome over here. Hope to see you again. Thank you for making this podcast ill and giving the wisdom to the youth. This is thank, thank you. Thank hey, you again. All at any time, anytime, man. 
So this has been What's Out. Peace. 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 Thank you, Phantom. My G, you already know what it is. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank Phantom, you so thank much, you guys. Thank you very much, brother.